Ancient humans were apex predators for two million years, according to a new study. Now, even cave art reflects our ancient eating habits. And as we've said in previous podcasts, we haven't found a single petroglyph or pictograph of a farm or a vegan. Now, Paleolithic cuisine was anything but lean and green. And according to a new study on the diets of our Pleistocene ancestors, well, as recent as 12,000 years ago, we lived primarily on, on meat. And for a good 2 million years, Homo sapiens and their ancestors ditched the salad and dined heavily on animals, putting them on the top of the food chain. It's not quite the balanced diet of berries, grains, and steak that we might picture when we think of paleo food. But according to a study last year by anthropologists from Israel's Tel Aviv University and the University of Minho in Portugal, modern hunter-gatherers have given us the wrong impression of what we once ate. Now, this comparison is futile. Because two million years ago, hunter-gatherer societies could hunt and consume elephants and other megafauna, large animals, while today's hunter-gatherers do not have access to such bounty. Now, researcher Mickey Bendor from Israel's Tel Aviv University explained in 2021, a look through hundreds of previous studies on everything from modern human anatomy and physiology to measures of the isotopes inside ancient human bones and teeth, suggest that we were primarily apex predators until roughly 12,000 years ago. Now, reconstructions of the grocery list of hominids who lived as far back as 2.5 million years ago is made as that much more difficult by the fact that plant remains don't preserve as easily as animal bones, teeth, and shells. And other studies have used chemical analysis of bones and tooth enamel to find localized examples of diet, heavy in plant material, but extrapolating this to humanity as a whole isn't so straightforward. We can find ample evidence of game hunting in the fossil record, as well as on petroglyphs. But to determine what we gathered, Anthropologists have traditionally turned to modern-day ethnography based on the assumption that little has changed. According to Ben Dorr and his colleagues, this is a huge mistake. The entire ecosystem has changed. And conditions cannot be compared whatsoever. Now, since the Younger Dryas event, we've been in... A warm period, an interstadial, an interglacial. And prior to that, we were in an ice age. The Pleistocene epoch was a defining time in Earth's history for us humans. And by the end of it, we were marching our way into the far corners of the globe, outliving every other type of hominid in our branch of the family tree. Dominated by the last great ice age, most of what is today's Europe and North America was regularly buried under thick glaciers. With so much water locked up as ice, ecosystems around the world were vastly different to what we see today. Large megafauna, large beasts roam the landscape, including, but not exclusively, mammoths, mastodons, and giant sloths in far greater numbers than we see any fauna today. Of course, it's no secret that Homo sapiens use their ingenuity and uncanny endurance to hunt down these massive meal tickets. But the frequency with which they preyed on these herbivores hasn't been so easy to figure out. Now, <coughs> in the region I live in, we have some of the most prolific mammoth kill sites in the entire world. 
These are Pleistocene mammoth kill sites that show evidence of huge amounts of butchering of meat in one single place. Literally, a butchery of thousands of mammoths, tens of thousands of pounds of meat. And all these people go extinct at the Younger Dryas event. These are the Clovis people. Now, the reason I say the frequency with which they preyed on these herbivores hasn't been so easily figured out is because there are very limited kill sites. And I happen to just live near most of them in the entire world. I think a lot of them were destroyed during the Younger Dryas cosmic catastrophe. But rather than relying solely on the fossil record or make tenuous comparisons with pre-agricultural cultures, the researchers in this paper turn to the evidence embedded in our own bodies and compared it with our closest cousins. And I quote, We decided to use other methods to reconstruct the diet of Stone Age humans, to examine the memory preserved in our own bodies, our metabolism, our genetics and physical build, said Ben Dor. Human behavior changes rapidly, but evolution is slow, and the body remembers. For example, compared with other primates, our bodies need more energy per unit of body mass, especially when it comes to our energy-hungry brains. Our social time, such as when it comes to raising children, also limits the amount of time we can spend looking for food. We have higher fat reserves, and can make use of them by rapidly turning fats into ketones when the need arises. Unlike other omnivores, where the fat cells are few but large, ours are small and numerous, echoing those of a predator. Our digestive systems are also suspiciously like that of animals higher up in the food chain. Having unusually strong stomach acid is just the thing we might need for breaking down proteins and killing harmful bacteria you'd expect to find on a weak old mammoth chop. Even our genomes point to a heavier reliance on a meat-rich diet than a sugar-rich one. For example, geneticists have concluded that areas of the human genome were closed off to enable fat-rich diets. While in chimpanzees, areas of the genome were open to enable a sugar-rich diet. Now, the team's argument is extensive. Touching upon evidence in tool use, signs of trace elements, and nitrogen isotopes as well. And they were using Paleolithic remains as well as dental wear in addition. It all tells a story where our genus trophic level Homo's position in the food web was. And it turns out that we became highly carnivorous. And let's get to that graphic. And so here you're looking at the data set where mammalian species is on the bottom axis and the percent of plants and animals eaten on the top. And what it, all of the data, looking at the dental, uh, the isotopes in the bones, everything that this team could look at, what they determined was as early as 2.5 million years ago, Homo erectus. And you can see here the Homo erectus loop back to Homo sapiens, back to an agrarian diet around 12,000 years ago. As early as 2.5 million years ago, we became apex predators consuming mostly meat. And we remain that way until the upper Paleolithic around 11,700 years ago. This is the end of the Younger Dryas catastrophe, for goodness sakes. Which we've been talking about time immemorial. This is my life's work. And I now have a new radio show dedicated to the topic. So please join us Saturday, noontime, mountain time on Revolution Radio Freedom Slips Studio B for our next conversation about what happened during this 
event. Specifically here, 11,700 years ago, the end of the Younger Dryas. And we're going to be talking about the black mat phenomenon, which occurred 12,900 years ago during the actual Younger Dryas drop down. So join us on Revolution Radio for that. Now back to the examination of our diets. Now what's interesting on everything we discussed tonight is that studies on modern hunter-gatherer communities, well, the study becomes a little more useful as a decline in populations of large animals and fragmentation of cultures around the world saw, well, plant consumption as being more important because there wasn't thousands of gigantic animals everywhere that you could just hunt and stick a spear in. They went extinct. They went extinct at the end of the Younger Dryas, and then a rapid warming occurred, which, as you know, if the sun turns on, more sunlight releases CO2 from the oceans, which is plant food, and you have a proliferation of plants across the planet, which happened 11,700 years ago. And since then, we've been farming. We've also been growing large mammals in a farming setting. We've become agrarian. Well, until about 1900, when we lost all of our agrarian touch, and 99% of all humanity has no idea how to provide for themselves. It literally is a mass extinction waiting to happen. Knowing where our ancestors sat in the food web has a big impact on understanding everything from our own health and physiology to our influence over the environment in times gone by. And now, the fact that if anything were to occur to perturb the current modern system of living, well, 99% of the population would die because they do not know how to hunt animals. They do not know how to grow food or wild harvest, or any of the things our ancestors have known time immemorial. And that's sad. And a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. We're going to be doing more exposés on these types of works. Let me know what you think below. And please join us every Saturday noon, Mountain Time, on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, Studio B, for Cosmic Catastrophe. Be safe. We love you.